Welcome to Chronic Combat Conversations, a live look at our best bets, picks, and predictions for every UFC event with your host, TB Scouting MMA and the guru back again for UFC Vegas 89, Amanda Hibas taking on Rose Namachunas in your flyweight main event. You know, I was going to say contender eliminator, but that's really next week's women's flyweight fight. But before we can get into that or this or any of that, <laughs> we've got an awesome guy in the building killing the show that we do conjoined with uh, Brady. Make sure you guys are checking that out as well. 138 MMA, Tyler, what's going on, brother? Just, uh, you know, hanging out in a random parking lot in my car. Uh, <laughs> the only place <laughs> I can things. get some good Wi-Fi. Of course. Getting yeah, on that uh, Starbucks Wi-Fi. He's yeah, I'm actually outside of a driver. hospital. Hospital Wi-Fi. All right, well. Jeez. Listen, listen, he's dedicated to the grind. That's what counts. If you guys aren't following 138 MMA already, you're making a mistake. He does great breakdown content each week. It's concise. It's to the point. Uh, he's even got the marker board behind him. It's like taking a lesson with the professor. So um, I really enjoy it. You guys should, too. Make sure you're heading over there, subscribing, and then come on back because we got a banger of a show today. We're live every Wednesday, 8 p.m., Tonight we are here for I'm sorry, Guru butchered it, but it's Amanda Hibash and it's Rose Rose Hibash. not by I you, I, right? Hibash. Not by I, didn't, you I didn't even I didn't even say the R, I said Hibash. No, yeah, but it's Hibash. It's not an S. There's a sh uh, I gotta say Hibash. Sh at the end. Hibash. Really? Yeah, and then it's and then it's Rose not by Yunus. Not a Yunus. It's not a hard J. You gotta say you gotta like ch it, don't you? Don't you ch no, it? No, it's you like don't ch it. No, no, it's, like, it's, like, it's, it's like a Y. It's like a Y. That's what I thought. Listen, anyways, as we devolve into what's going to be happening as this show continues on and on, you're here for the discourse. You want to hear TV give horrible nicknames. You want to see the guru get upset at them. That's what we're here to do. And 138 MMA is here to add to the chaos. So I hope you guys are ready for a great show because – the card might not be as good as this show is. I'm just going to be That's honest. The worst have... I'm already so pissed off. That's the worst fucking nickname. Why is she all that? <laughs> it's That's like Amanda Bynes. Amanda, all what? that. Do you see... she doesn't first, off, first off, do you, like Amanda Bynes, maybe when she's like younger, do you see Amanda Bynes now? She no. looks horrific. No, no and then shit. All, when she was not, Amanda so on the day, on the No, on the day <laughs> that that whole documentary comes out about Nickelodeon, you're literally going to drop Amanda all that, yes. Ebosh? That's yes, what I you're am. about to do? That's no. exactly what no, I was doing. No, I'm not letting you disrespect and, my girl like that. Uh, and then, not happening. okay, so is it Amanda Chocolate? Is it, should that be her nickname? That's a little, that thing? would still be a little weird, but you're All at least right, fair enough. Well, I'm doing my best. And then we've got Rose, Thug Rose, or should we say, hold on a second. Should we say, Guru, what did you say before? We had 138 MMA. Look at that. Is that, is that Thug Rose? That is. <laughs> Oh my really god, see, but like look at him, he doesn't even look like that. Like, I don't even know what's happening here. It's like That's we went so to funny. a different universe. It's like the reverse but, catfish. So this is great. We have the person in the house that we need for this breakdown. We got Thug Rose in the building, people. It's 138 MMA and Amanda, all that hebosh. Screw you, guru. I'm doing my thing. But this is what happens when you leave control of the slideshow to TV. This is this is what happens. But all right, here's here's also what happened. We have Amanda Hibosh here taking this fight against Thug Rose. And I think, quite frankly, Amanda Hibosh does not have enough defensive capabilities on the feet. What, what's going on? Are you good, Guru? I'm fine. Fair enough. Not. All right. I thought you needed me for a second there. All right. So, <laughs> all right. Well, Amanda, she um, I feel like she doesn't have enough defensive Never needed you. Oh, my God. Uh, well, you were doing like a little camera thing? Like, what was that? I don't know. I thought you were talking to me. Are you, you getting after it? Oh, baby. Zoltan. Zolta. All right, so Thug Rose here. I mean, listen, if she's able to play off the back foot, she's. I know it's going to be the smaller octagon, but Hibosh is all front foot pressure, counters, um, like in combinations, I should say, coming forward. And doesn't that play into the counter style of Thug Rose? It's just, are we so sure it's a knockout? I mean, Wei Li, that thing was like, it was a great head kick. But that's also as the fight's getting started. We saw Wei Li eat some gigantic punishment from other fighters a, a long time. I mean, have you seen the Joanna fight? And then the other thing is that, like, against jo Joanna for Thug Rose, that first fight, you could see, like, she caught her by surprise. Second fight, you see it go the distance here. So is the is the power of Thug Rose and the chin of Amanda Hibosh being overstated? That's my biggest focus here. 
Because if Amanda Hibosh is the same person that showed up for the Marina Rodriguez fight, I mean, first round of Macy Barber fight too, even before the finish in the second, I mean, it, it's getting ugly in there. Like she's bleeding heavily and fast. And Thug Rose, she's got power. She's a legitimate striker. Um, and, and she's able to counter well off the back foot. The, the worry is like no Trevor Whitman. So for two camps now, she's not getting those looks in the striking department. Is she the same striker without that detailed camp off of the back foot? And what does her cardio look like these days? Um, is she, cause she's tended to slow down in three round fights against pressure fighters. So if this thing is going deep, I kind of almost favor Hibosh because if she's not getting chinned, she's going to be throwing more volume. She's, she's got takedowns. We've seen Thug Rose wrestle before. So I laid a bet on Hibosh at plus 150. I cashed out because it started moving to, it was like plus 140. Then all of a sudden I was like, you know what? Like maybe I'm missing something here. So I cashed out and now Thug Rose is minus 218 is plus 180. I mean, I'm considering it. It's just not, this is nowhere near best bet territory. I feel terrible overall about this fight. But if it is going five rounds, and if you search your soul and say, like, you know, search your feelings, like, what do you know to be true here? This fight is probably going over. And if that's the case, who has more volume? And who's going to be picking up as the fight goes on? We don't have round proof of Hibosh's cardio, but I mean, listen, Luana Santos, I mean, or Luana Pinedo, as fraudulent as it gets, and her gas tank is terrible. But, I mean, what if Rose is slowing down? So, listen, I mean, it's a lot of conjecture for something I don't have a ton of confidence in, but I am kind of leaning towards the Hibosh dog shot. I just can't fully recommend it to you guys. So, I hope, you know, I love the over four and a half plus 110. I think this mm. might be a distance. That's probably better. And hesitantly, I mean, like, I lean towards, like, yeah, Rose should win this fight more often than not if she's the same lady. But, like, would you be surprised if she retires if she lost this? So, I don't know. I don't want to trust her at minus 218 at this point. Like, the market, obviously, maybe they're on to something. But I must be missing. Um, Yeah, this is a really, really interesting fight. Um, I think TB touched on, I, I think, the main thing that if anybody's really looking into this fight super deep, they're going to touch on. R Rose early. And Rose has to get the finish early. You know what I mean? I... I I mean, yes, can she win a decision? I, I think it's possible, but I, I think her best win equity or the best way that she's going to cover this favorite price is through an early finish. The problem with that is you look, you're not submitting Amanda Hibosh. Um, and Amanda Hibosh has has shown a, a a less than stellar chin, right? Being knocked out three times, Macy Barber, Marina Rodriguez, and Pollyanna Viana on the regionals, which is even worse. Um you, you look at that and it's like, what, what can, can Amanda weather that storm early? That's the real question. And when you look at the lines, uh, you've got Rose Namajunas by KO at plus 155. That's horrendous. They're pricing her like it's Francis Ngannou. I have no idea what's happening. So when you look at something like that, it's like, well, damn. Maybe this, maybe they don't have the best read on this fight, or maybe she deads her early. I think it's possible she could dead her early because I think the small cage is is going to be problematic for that. You know, it should breed uh, more activity from honestly from both of them. But at the same time, if Amanda gets comfortable in there, you see that warrior face that she puts on when she's in that zone. She's gonna she's gonna she's gonna pull away, especially in the later rounds. I mean, I don't think that Rose Namajunas personally beat Welly Zhang in that fight, but I mean, it was certainly close. I'll say that each and every time we break down Rose's fight. But yeah, uh, especially without Whitman in, his corner, his, in her corner, like you had already mentioned, TB, I think it's a really, really tough call. But uh, I, I think I lean Rose here. I just, at the end of the day, it comes down to trust. And I really, I just don't trust. Hibosh's chin or durability at all. And um, I think Rose in the last fight versus uh, uh, Manon Firo, I mean, actually, I'm sorry. I know for a fact that she broke her finger early, right? So she was kind of a shell of herself. And then she wins round three for whatever that's worth. So her cardio comes on or, or Manon Firo's cardio kind of tapers off or she's comfortable in coast. But she wins round three on all three judges' scorecards with a broken finger. So for whatever that's worth, Rose is pretty solid. And if she does win this fight, she's really basically one fight away from title contention again anyway.
because she's a huge, huge market name. So give me Rose. I don't want minus 218. It's just probably props. I'd probably play a, like a round one, two, three grouping type thing. Although when I've done that the last couple of weeks, it hasn't worked well. I did it on Shamil and then I did it on Tai Ivasa. But I guess maybe I'm just picking heavyweights. So that's that problem. But this is women's MMA. So that's its own problem. I've talked for way too long. 138, what do you got? Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, for me, this fight is a pass. If if I am just going to put a, any money on it, it's not going to be on this fight. This this fight's a no-go. But, but we're here to make picks. We're here to entertain. Rose at her best wins this fight at a pretty high clip. We don't know if we're getting Rose at her best, which is why I'm passing. Because otherwise, yeah, you play Rose at even minus 218, no problem. If we know we're getting the best Rose Namajunas, the one that won the title, the one that... The one that, you know, head kick Whaley, or Zhang Whaley, I think is how you pronounce it. That, you know, if that Rose Namunas shows up, sure, no problem. But in this matchup, I don't know. I don't know which one we're going to get. Um, Hibosh is not, she's not bad. She does have some defensive liabilities that I don't like. Uh, but otherwise, she's good. She's got excellent hip tosses. And I think if she can get a hold of Rose, I think the, the matchup's close. Because Rose is a good grappler, but she's not, I mean... Amanda might have her in the grappling department at this point in their careers. I don't know for sure. Maybe she does. I'm going to stay away, but I, I, I'm i going to say Rose gets it done. She could win a decision. She could win by submission. She could win by knockout. I don't think all three of those things are necessarily true on the opposite side. For Hibosh, I think she kind of, I think she's going to have a hard time knocking out Rose, for example. I don't think she's going to knock her out. Namius is very tough. So I think I, I'm slightly leaning the Nami Yunus side, and it's mostly just because I know that if she shows up at her best, she can do, she can win this fight no problem, but we can't say that she will. She hasn't shown her best in a little while, you know, but maybe it's a get right spot for her. So we're going to, we're going to find out Saturday. So I'll pick Rose for the sake of a pick, but I'm going to pass as far as a bet. Nice. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm certainly on Rose for the pick. I just trust wise, even still without, uh, Trevor Whitman in a corner, wondering what what her motivation is or where she's at. I still have more confidence in that than Amanda Hibosh's durability. And uh, it's unfortunate because Hibosh has shown, at least offensively, all the makings of somebody that could be, you know, very exciting. But if you got a glass chin, doesn't work. So I'm not taking you here. And uh, I, and yeah, listen, like I said, Rose makes her debut at flyweight here against an absolute beast who we're going to get to see live next week. Literally can't wait. So, I mean, that's a tough fucking fight to just take. And she looked decent. I mean, not great through the first two rounds. And then that third round looked okay. So. Nice. Yeah, she yeah, can build nice. into a fight better than a lot of people can. She has that five-round experience. And I think that's going to help her right. here if yeah. it gets that long. That's yeah. the other problem with leaning into cardio. Oh, She's got the cardio advantage. Yeah, but Rose has done how many championship fights? And we're sure she doesn't have the cardio advantage? Or at least uh, comp or at least comparable cardio. Right. Yeah, One, I mean, listen, you gotta take you gotta pick Rose here, I think, unless you're expecting her to not be at her best. If you know something. I I well, feel like cardio, with the way the line went that somebody knows something else that, that they know that she's on point. So in cardio, also you gotta take into account cardio is something that can fluctuate quickly. Uh you can gain a significant amount of cardio in a very short window of time. You also mm -hmm. lose it fairly quickly, but you can gain it pretty quick. It's not like, like packing on muscle mass to move up a weight class or something that takes some serious time. Cardio, not that much. You can, you can put on, you can gain quite a bit of cardio in a very short window. I think it also comes with experience too, having been there in a fight and knowing what it feels like at certain moments. And, you know, even if you've guessed before, I mean, we saw Amarim and all the arguments. Well, she hasn't had to get there, uh, you know, in the McKenna fight, but there are arguments to be made yeah. that sometimes adrenaline dumps happen. And once you have the experience that it's not necessarily like a physical gassing issue, more as a mental gassing issue where there's someone later on this fight I definitely want to talk about in that regard. However, first off, I've been not so diligent. Appreciate all you guys in the chat. Lou. If you're not an AC, you are a hooker. So we will be looking for you there, sir. I'm pretty Gaz. sure all the hookers are an AC. So I well, would expect fun. Lou to be an AC regardless. Right. Well, he might still have to do work in Philly that night. You never know. Um, 
Daz, yeah, you know, he's working them corners. Daz, yeah, 138 is legendary. That's why we had to get him on. You know we get the best guests. Come on. Sure, Daz, sure. Sure. Oh, let's go. Uh, hello, Chronic Conversations, friends. Hello, Phantom Punch slash The Ghost. Um, yeah, all that. See, people love the nicknames, Guru. So I'm just saying, doing a great time no, they, over here. No, they don't. They, they love it. Um, why is this card so bad? Uh, I mean, come on. It's not even that the main event is like a bad fight or a matchup. It's just when you see like the quality of talent that we have on the main card compared to some other cards, it's not quite the same. So, hey, it's a, it's more of a learning perspective this week, I'd say. Um, Ghost and Prey, yeah, very bad defense. Totally agree. She gives up her back on body locks, very square. Um, yeah, if it's boring, that could be good, and it could be Rose all day. Um, could go to a decision there. Yeah, low kicks, good left hook. Does she have those tools? It is an ugly line. Yeah, definitely don't want to be touching this. It's, you don't want to take this one home from the bar late at night. And then uh, everyone can gain cardio except Mop on her, Amir Khani. Agreed. That's facts. That is, that is true. Um, he's more worried about getting fantastic topology pictures <laughs> instead. Um, all right, so we got Carl the Llama Williams versus Justin <laughs> Badman Taffa. Um, llama? Jimmy Neutron, baby. Yeah, that's you a winner. You know, that's if a you winner. don't know, Carl, he loves llamas, man. Come on. Nah, I love nah, llamas. Nah, nah. <laughs> 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 yes, thank you. See, I'm glad I could win you over with some Jimmy Neutron. Um, well, here's the thing, Carl. Are you going to be able to land take that? How did you even watch that there? show? You didn't have cable. Brother, I, I I have my ways. Let's say I used to be a babysitter uh, growing up. Um, so that was part of the way I could like see like a You and Dan Schneider, top. huh? Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so I've seen some like, you know, some classy stuff. And then also like grandparents' house or, you know, cousin's house, whatever. But Fair enough. Um, Carl the Llama here. I mean, <laughs> send this llama to your mama because this guy – I mean, he's as takedown and top control dependent as it gets. Like, his stand-up striking game from distance, it's not pretty. And it's all a, a means to an end to get to the wrestling. I don't even think his wrestling's that good. I just think he got the the opportunity of a lifetime to face the one and only Chase the Vanilla Gorilla Sherman. <laughs> and Lucas, my name should be Bresky, but it's Dresky. Those are the two guys that were basing. And what, some Jamoka on Contender Series? That's why we're impressed about his wrestling? Yeah, I don't know the guy's name. I'm not looking at it. I don't care. Jimmy Lawson? Yeah, Jimmy Lawson. Who the fuck? Come on. Oh, he was a wrestler in college. What? <laughs> this is MMA. A little, it's a little fraudulent less wrestler. Yeah, and Carl is really – like, wasn't he a 205-er at one point? Like, that's a – look at the size discrepancy of these two gentlemen. Like, Justin Taffa cuts heavily to make to, to make heavyweight. Now, I, it would be did horrible if I didn't did mention. his excuse of why he <laughs> didn't fight. Yeah, um, the good old tight with middle seat on the airplane, right? Ridiculous. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely ridiculous. I really think he knew that Carl would be an easier matchup than Rogerio de Lima. And he said, hey, listen, Junior, you're the younger brother, buddy. You got to take the guy with the, the better calf kicks. And listen, the wrestling never even was a factor in that fight. And quite frankly, I think that Tafa would have done better if de Lima shot takedowns than if he landed those calf kicks. So... In this fight, Tafa, I think, has the calf kicks, so he's going to slow down the movements and the shots of Williams. I think he's going to land way more power on Williams coming in. He's a counter-striker. There's a reason why Austin Lane was going to die two times if he didn't poke him in the eye that, that first fight. So, um, yeah, Tafa, I got the bad man. I got him plus 154. Let's have a party. Yeah, I don't <laughs> – this fight is certainly a, an interesting one. I uh... – I, I, yeah, I, I lean Justin Taffa in terms of violence. To your point, I don't really love Carl Williams' body of work. Um, and Justin Taffa is not his brother. He's way more athletic. Uh, he's got better takedown defense. Um, he's he's stronger. He's bigger. Uh, yeah, and I, I didn't really love the – I don't know why I picked Junior Taffa in that last matchup. I mean, that was just simply a mistake. I, I, I just uh, – yeah, I don't really have any excuse for it. Just, just a, a, a mistake. And uh, Carl Williams here, like, like you said, he's just a fairly middling fighter. Um, doesn't really put it together too much on the feet, right? He's just kind of trying to one-two box it around. I, I don't know. I'm not super impressed with it. I think if he plays too much patty cake with Justin Toppa here, he's going to end up in trouble. But I don't know. It's not necessarily the fight that I want the most exposure on. 
Um, I don't know. Do you have a stronger read on this one, uh, one three eight? So yeah, and I'm going to be the man on an island here. Um, so I so TV mentioned that Justin Taffa is the bigger guy, and like in one sense, he's the wider guy. He's just fat. <laughs> like he's big and fat. Like it's not he's bigger. Carl Williams is taller and longer. He's got longer reach, quite like mm-hmm. a decent clip taller. And Carl Williams, I know people think that like, oh, his striking is terrible. He does have a nice jab and he's going to poke that jab out there in the first round and stay away. And that's what he's going to do. He's going to wear out Justin Taffa, who is going to be just putting down his bag of Cheetos on the way to the cage. So for, for poor Justin Taffa, the guy's going to be going to be like, man, I got to get back there and finish my bag of Cheetos. And Carl Williams is going to jab him up for the first round, stay out, out at range, and wait till Tafa's getting frustrated. When he gets frustrated, that's when Carl Williams is getting the takedown. He's going to lay on top of him. He's probably gonna do, not going to do anything with it for the that's first the round and a half, maybe. But after that, late second round, third round, that's when he's going to start actually trying to advance position, land some decent ground and pound. And I think Carl Williams is going to cruise to a decision here. Yes, it's going to be a little bit dicey earlier in the matchup mm-hmm. where, where Tafa's swinging big, heavy bombs. He is a good counter striker. I think he's going to have trouble closing the distance on Carl Williams when he's sticking that jab while also being mindful of that takedown. Because I understand yeah. that Justin Taffa has good takedown defense on paper, but not very many people in the UFC have shot takedowns on him. And the ones that have aren't any aren't even decent wrestlers. They're just not good wrestlers whatsoever. So I'm going to say Carl Williams to use the Jared Vandera jab you and move yeah. strategy and win the early round and then continue from there and get the wrestling. So Carl Williams is my pick and I feel pretty good about him. You know what? And I want to be honest with you guys and, you know, with everybody in the chat. This was a fight that I honestly didn't get to look into as much yet. It was uh, on the list of fights I was doing. It's the lowest one on the list. I still have more tape to do on it. And, uh, you know, just even mentioning that, right? One of the best things of Justin Taffa's offense is his calf kicks, right? Those mm-hmm. smashing, buckling calf kicks. Are those effective when you're worried about takedowns? Not as much. Can you, can you throw them as much? No. Do you end up on your ass if you do? Yes. So I think that's super problematic, even right there. Um, if you're if you like Justin Taffa and he doesn't have his calf kick, I don't know why you like Justin Taffa anymore. Just the punching it's power, just, right? It's just, but to your point, how you it's going to really it's a much more difficult to find your range if you're not able to throw that calf kick. And mm-hmm. calf kick's a great range finder, and it's a good way to stop the mobility, especially if somebody like Carl Williams, who's going to be faster, way faster. And yeah, he, and even if you're not, even if he wasn't faster. If they had the exact same speed, the guy with the longer reach is going to land first if you both throw. So mm. even if he's not faster, he's still going to land there for land first. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't love the I dog shot. A, here. I need the dog shot here, but I need it. I need it, even if it's small. I just well, uh, why don't you? Why wouldn't you just play the round one prop instead? Well, I think no. I'm just going to play the knockout at plus two twenty. Right, that's fair. I don't think it needs to be round one. I mean. Top has been three rounds plenty of times. I think the biggest issue is that he pulled out of the other fight and is at this one, but I think this is a much better matchup for him than than Delima. I think Delima was so was too. was good in both was good in like both frames. I'm, I'm sorry, like Carl's reactions and and speed. Like if this gets mm. in the pocket at all, Top has got the faster hands. Like Carl might move quicker, but Top is in the pocket. Like as long as he's not running face first in his debut against um you know um i'm sorry jorgen de castro i know that was really ugly but he also was like minus 500 was he expected to just run forward and run through the guy like everyone else he's ever faced he got caught by a counter being stupid like legitimately being as zero iq as you could possibly be since then he hasn't done something like that and i've seen him even against taller guys like austin lane who was Austin faster Lane's and who was shot. landing? Yeah, Austin but Lane's you know what? Like, shot. I watched Carl Williams striking, and even if he is landing the jab, Top is going to be able to eat something like that to mm-hmm. land a hook counter. That's, to that's your point thought. as well, when you watch that Carlos Felipe fight, I absolutely think Justin Taffa won. So I think that's a robbery right there. I think he could win it. This, I mean, like, I, I don't know if Carl can withstand the punishment for three rounds, but I mean – Carlos Felipe is really good, guys. He was on a lot of steroids, too. Like, there's a reason he's not in the UFC, and it's because he was on an unreal amount of steroids and, like, could not not pass a drug test. So um, that's the reason why he's not here, not because so he wasn't a he good He could player. not not pass a drug You mean he could pass a drug test? Is that what I was just saying? I was just emphasizing he could not. He could not pass a drug test. Like, okay. like let's be clear here. I'm you sorry. You say absolutely. I like to apologize. You should apologize. Um, 
Guru, would you want to go first on this one after I intro it, or no? Would you want the we, next one? We, I don't care. Whatever you want. Ah, oh, whatever. All right, so we got Edmund, the Golden Boy Shabazian versus AJ, Bronze Bomber Dobson. This is going to be a, a AIDS, pretty wild right? fight. AIDS. AIDS. Yeah. It's, AIDS. it's so bad that he didn't even notice the nickname. Um, you don't the even bron- know AIDS. The Bronze Bombers. That, yeah, you made him like he's Andy <laughs> no. Joshua. No, Deontay Wilder. Thank Deontay you Deontay Wilder. Much. Fuck. God damn it. Yeah, hey, God damn it. Um, but yeah, I mean, let's be serious here. So AJ Dobson, zero finishing upside at the UFC level. Wasn't Andy but then you're facing a guy in Edmund Shabazian who just refuses to be a winner after two rounds. So the question here is like, do we fade the narrative and take Edmund Shabazian by decision? He's going to win round <laughs> one. Like, it's going to be like Dolgarian. He's going to win round one 99% of the time. It's just what happens after that. Does he get 10 aided in round three? Does he die? Like, you know, is he getting stolen on scorecards in round two and Dobson's winning? But realistically, I think Shabazian should be the much better fighter earlier. Like, I think yeah. he's way faster. I think he is a good wrestler. I think he is good in all facets of MMA except his mental mental side of things here. And that's where I think it gets tricky. How do you lay minus 205 on someone that you know is a quitter? Someone that you know has his cardio and his toughness has failed him before. However, one thing that did impress me, he refuses to be submitted. Like, there is something to that. Like, Brunson could have choked him out. Uh, he could have tapped out there. He could have gotten choked out um, by Anthony Fluffy Hernandez like 30 different times. Yeah, He fights I mean, out of chokes and refuses to tap. But Dobson, I mean, like, come on. I'm not saying Dobson's a submission guy. I'm just saying. There's just the reason why. He just gives up. No, I I, I like Edmund here. Minus 205. It's not my favorite price, obviously. But I I, I think he, first off, I think he could find a finish. So that's absolutely one reason why you pay a minus 205. And, you know, when you look at who Edmund's lost to, again, like, every single time, they're like, they give him such difficult competition right they're giving him he's losing to brunson he's look he gets wrestled by jack hermanson these guys that guy's a cardio machine you go with imavov who you know you're coming off a, a tough you know he's, he's been getting knocked out right imavov is not necessarily some sort of easier matchup they it's constant big fish you okay you got a win under your belt all right, no problem. Let's give you a little. Uh, let's give you a little fluffy Hernandez, rubber chin, unlimited cardio, grapple the fuck out of you. What like what the fuck are they doing? Who's this guy's manager? He's it's been horrible matchup after horrible matchup for him. Oh, AJ it's, it's Dobson, Ronda's old manager, right? Exa- exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. AJ, AJ Dobson is nowhere near the caliber of the guys that he's been facing. I mean, even when you watch him face Fluffy Hernandez, Fluffy goes. What is it? Five of sixteen on takedowns. Uh, Edmund stuffs a decent amount of them. Hear me out here. Edmund's takedown defense, while not great, is a little overblown in how how bad it is. I don't think it's that terrible. Maybe he gives up a, a takedown to AJ Dobson, but I don't think it's going to be very many. And I think he'll fight back to the feet. I think he hurts him on the feet, and I I think that the fight goes under. And uh, not only that, I, I think if even if it gets outside of, like you said, to start round three, I don't like Edmund at all because you're right. He could very well quit or stall. But, hey, if he's fixed anything, maybe he's got some better cardio. Uh, uh, 138. Tyler, what do you got going on here? So, honestly, this is the one fight on the card I don't have any sort of, like, good read on whatsoever. Like, I don't feel like I know – I don't feel like I know enough on this one. Even my notes were just horrible. Mm. Uh, Dobson doesn't do enough for me to really have any good read on him. And Shabazian, like you guys said, like he's kind of falls apart. Right. And like my coach used to always tell me that, that, uh, that losing becomes a habit. And there was this, there was this guy. And uh, back when I was still fighting way, way back, like forever ago. And he didn't have a corner for a night for whatever reason, his corner, like up and left mid show. So my coach said he would do it. And he's in the back warming this guy up. Finds out this guy's got heavy, heavy hands. Dude can throw bombs. And my coach is like, all right, dude. His name was Bobby. He's like, all right, Bobby. All you got to do is go out there and just throw a one-two as hard as you can right down the pipe. And you're going to knock this guy dead. He does that. He goes out, lands a one-two, explodes this dude's face. Guy's bleeding all over the place. Now, Bobby hasn't won a fight in ages, right? Now, 
it's, he's got this guy's face all busted up. The other guy's backing up into the corner, and then he just swings back like a crappy, like, wild shot. And Bobby just turtles up, falls to the ground, and gets scared and just gets beat. And it's like, dude, you just had to throw one more punch. Shabazian's not that bad, don't get me wrong. But losing becomes a habit. He, you, you feel like, oh, this is what happens when I start to lose these fights, and it's in your mind. Yeah. I'm going to take Dobson just for the fact that he's an underdog and Shabazian's just, just can't seem to win a fight at, at, for whatever reason, he just can't seem to get it done. So I'm going to take Dobson over the guy that's one and four in his last five fights, but I don't feel good about it. I won't bet it. I'm going to stay away. There's a couple of fights on this card that we're getting them out of the way early, but this is one this I'm less confident in this than I am in the main event. So Dobson, I guess. Yeah. yeah there's a couple of concerns I have from the Dobson side is that, He's not able to take down a guy like Armin Petrosian that's willing to get taken down by anybody. And um, Jacob Malkoon, while he's a very good wrestler, that's about all he offers. So if AJ Dobson was like a really good wrestler, you would think that he might be able to stuff some takedowns, yeah. have some of his success, but he doesn't. And Tafan Chukwi, what, he missed weight for that fight and looked terrible and had no gas. And We picked him. We picked him. We were on we AJ Dobson. Dobson. Yeah, we yeah were. that's what I'm saying. We were on AJ. That's what I'm saying. But, so that's but, why. I well, what? Well, but well, well, at the same well. time, I don't think AJ Dobson has like a Bro, clear look path. Look at the guys. Look at the guys that are melting Edmund. That's what I'm saying. Yes, exactly. That's, that's a great that's, point. That's the real point. The guys that are melting Edmund, the guys that are making him quit, are guys that are main eventing fights <laughs> that are signing big deals with Pel uh, uh, PFL to go over there, right? I mean, these guys are are legitimate world class fighters. AJ Dobson, I'm sorry, brother, bronze bomber, have you on the show if you want, but you are not world class fighter right now. I just don't see it. Come, come, take out Edmund Shabazian and show the world how how sweet you are, man. 32 years old, you know what I mean? Come, come out here and take him out. We'll get two in a row. That'd be sweet. So, a finish? Can I can I compare this to another fight? Um, sure. Well, I think Darren Stewart fight. Um, a guy that had never been like finished before. And when they fight, you know, Darren Stewart has like solid wrestling, but he's not great. Right. And he's not the best athlete, but he never been finished and has solid enough cardio. Well, guess right. what happened in that fight? And it goes the distance. Right. Hmm. So, and I feel like it's Shabazzian by decision and that he doesn't melt because Dobson just can't push him to that place. But I don't think that Edmund finishes him. And I think that's the missing link in this fight. So I honestly I'll take Edmund as the pick, but I think if you're gonna fade the narrative, don't go too far here. I don't think it's the bronze bomber, I think it's the golden boy. And I think he just finds a way to like manage his pace for three rounds this time because mm -hmm. the threat coming back just isn't gonna be good enough to put him in that in that bad memory. Like send him down PTSD lane. Uh it's not quite Derek Brunson in this. Situation. Yeah, and, and let's just be honest, AJ Dobson doesn't even have the power of somebody like uh, Derek Brunson. Uh, like, he just doesn't. This is much more like the Dolce fight than it is you know, like the Nasruddin Imavov fight. The funniest part, I said, oh, Dobson doesn't have submissions like that. He has more submissions than knockouts in his career. He has two decisions, two knockouts, and three subs. He's not good, bro. Like, it's he's not, not. It's Edmund for me. It's Edmund by decision is my ultimate thing. But do not parlay minus 205. Well, that's interesting. I wanted to talk to you guys about. that because – uh, shout out Danny Legs. I was able to get on some early line movement, and then the okay. uh, the Billy Billy Q fight changed. But this was one of the fights I had got in early on. We'll talk about the other one late in a little bit. But I had gotten the under at Pickham here. Man, I have un under two and a half Pickham. Man. So it's like, yeah, I know you don't like it. You think you a decision, but I feel like the finish could come either way. But and the, and obviously the bookmakers agree, right? Under it, under it, minus one forty five. It'd be but, line movement, right? Yeah, but what do you think, one three eight? Do you like my under two and a half, or do I do I cash it? You don't like it? I I don't know, honestly. Like I said, I have no, this is a hard one. So yeah. I don't think Shabazian finishes Dobson. I do think Dobson's durable, so I don't think he's gonna finish Dobson. And I don't know that Dobson does enough to finish Shabazian, but if he does, I think it's late. Obviously, yeah. So, like, you could get a late finish. And I guess technically Shabazzian could knock him out in the first. I just don't know that he does. I don't know that he – I don't, why, I don't, do we, I don't, why do we think he's so durable? He fights Jacob Malkoon, who refuses to throw a punch and will grind you out. And he fights Pillow, pillow Hands Armin Petrosian, who's worried more about pace than he is about power. 
So, and then Tafan and Chukwe, who sucks. Like it was, I went on this, I literally went on the rant. I sat in this seat. I went on the rant last week <laughs> about Kennedy and Chukwe. And I don't understand and I don't get it. And what is OSP doing here and all of it? I didn't get any of it. And I was like, how funny would it be if it went the distance? We talked about the line. We talked about all of it, except he wins a fucking decision and a clear one. So it's like, you know what I mean? AJ Dobson, I, I, who has he fought? What has he done? I, so I don't look, look at the I don't records have any, of this guy. Sorry. One in there's no way to see him one. getting wobbled at any point, I don't think. So we haven't right. really seen him get wobbled. And that's what makes me think he's probably at least reasonably durable. And Shabazian's not the type that has that like killer instinct to him. He doesn't like when he hits you, he can crack you. Yeah, he'll put you out with like one big shot and like, you know, what have you, but he's not gonna like follow it down and just start raining shots on you like like a lot of guys do when they crack somebody and drop them mm. yeah that that's, that's kind of where i'm at but i don't I, like i said this is my least uh my worst read on the card is this fight that's fair i think we spent enough time on it then too but it, this is an exciting fight all right we got peyton manning talbot versus msp <laughs> Cameron no, Boo. 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 <laughs> All right, Guru, Boo. go ahead. What do you got for this fight? Uh, dude, I got the you could you should have called him Corbin Blue or whatever that kid's name is. That's exactly what he looks like. Bro, that, you think I know the names of people from whatever that what kid's is. name is from the I don't even know. I think his name was that. You say I don't even know. I think it was that after definitively stating, I think I think you know something you, you don't want to admit to, you dirty little skeeter. Anyways, you go ahead. What do you got going on? Do you not think there? that he looks like that? I don't know what the shit, the high school musical shit you posted earlier. Is that what it was? Is that, does he not look like him? I had no idea what it was until my girlfriend saw the tweet and said, why are you looking at high school musical right now? I said, uh, guru chose that gif. Because that's who he looks like. Bro, I've, I've never seen it. How did you know what to look for? I, because I, my, I have a sister who watched high school musical while we were growing up. And I was like, what the fuck is this? I didn't watch yeah, it, but I obviously knew about you it. You didn't watch it. It was, it was, it was, pretty, it was, it was it really songs. popular in pop culture, bro. Like, sorry. You know, some of us were getting bitches in high school, you know, not, not Jesus. you, Raleigh, but you know, Jesus Christ. Wow. This guy's going to another level right now. Defensively. He's looking like, uh, like OG Ananobi out here on the defense. Listen, uh, we, all right. We, but what's your pick in this no hundred point games here? I listen, I ended up liking Peyton Talbot here. Um, we got in early on the line movement. I got in a pick them, which uh, was super exciting. <laughs> um, I logged that over on better MMA. You can see that there. Um, yeah, this is a super, super interesting fight. I feel like Peyton Talbot is just the more athletic guy. Uh, I think he's got the more over the well-rounded uh, game set. And, you know, I, I think at the end of the day when Peyton Talbot's – I think both of their deficiencies is like the defensive wrestling, and neither one of them is necessarily going to do that. But if one of them maybe were to – I kind of feel a little bit better about Peyton, but this is this to me, honestly, maybe I just have PTSD and that's fair, but it, I'm just getting so many gross shades of Isaac Dolgarian and C-Rod and um, I, yeah, I'm just kind of nauseous about it. So what do you think? Maybe you guys will make me feel better. <laughs> 138. What do you got here? Uh, I'm taking the Terminator and I think that would have been a better nickname for Peyton Talbot because this dude is a Terminator. He's right, like right. sent from Cyberdyne Systems sucks, straight dude. up looking <laughs> to kill John Connor. Like this dude has been sent from the future just to run through whatever you shoot at this man. He's even got that bullet hole in the middle of his stomach. I think that's what it's from. And he's just going to walk through whatever and it doesn't matter. And you just, you're going to, you're going to try and you're going to try and you're going to try, but he's just going to keep being there right behind you, chasing you down until you eventually run out of places to go. And that's when he catches you and he beats you to death. I got to take Peyton Talbot because the dude's a freaking Terminator. I think Cameron Simon's got all the talent in the world, but I don't think he can stop a Terminator, like a T-1000 or something. We got we got Peyton, the Terminator Talbot here, and that's who I'm taking. Yeah, I think, I, to your point exactly, I think Cameron Simon wants to stay more at range, have a pretty clean fight, and the Terminator is going to come forward and crush the Terminator. you. He wants to close that distance. He wants to make it dirty, and I, I think he finds a way to do that. Can I 100%. tell you, there's, there's nothing better than when a guest comes on and understands the assignment and adds to the nicknames. So fuck you, Zoltan, up there. We got the Terminator. <laughs> Anybody in the chat want to tell me where that's from? They know. They get a bonus point. Uh, 
All right, yeah, we'll so. Yeah, I like that. I like that. All right, what about this one? We got Billy the Squid Quarantillo versus Yusuf the Moroccan Devil Zalal. Did I do well? Did I make That's you better. Know? I like the squid. All right, fair enough. So, Billy, minus 130. Let me tell you another story. I had a bet on Billy at, like, minus 138. And then I saw it go to minus 150. Oh, did you? What, what, it out. Was that the number? What was the and number on that? I had it at minus 138. Ooh. I saw the line go to minus 150. I cashed it out. I said, you know what? I did a little more research on the fight. I don't know why I'd be so confident on a money line favorite play on Billy the Squid. So that's where my story ends. And this is where 138 MMA is going to pick it up. So 138, what do you see in this fight now that I've told a little story about line movement? So I think Yusuf Zalal has all the talent in the world, but he doesn't have a ton of output. And that bothers me against Billy Q. Because... One thing we know about Billy Q is he's going to have a ton of output. And if you've got a ton of output and the other guy doesn't have a ton of output, when it goes to the scorecards, the guy with a ton of output often wins. So I don't think Yusuf Zalal is going to finish Billy Q. I think Billy Q is tough. Now, he could. He has a he has a very devastating step-in knee that often becomes a step-in knee followed by a flying knee if, he's, if the opponent backs up. If he does that, yeah, he might crack Billy Q, put the guy to sleep. But I don't think he's going to get that. I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think we're going to decision. So for Zalal to win a decision, he's going to need to drop Billy Q multiple times or get a, an extensive amount of time controlling him on the mat because anytime they're at range, for every one punch Zalal throws, Billy Q's got like eight going his way. So I've got to side with Billy Q. It's not my most confident pick on the card, but it also gives me a little bit more confidence knowing that Zalal's coming in super short notice. He's He was the last one added to this card, if I do remember correctly. Zalal should have a lot of physical advantages being like younger and stronger as uh, as we've got down there in the chat mentioned that he's um, the age difference. But I think Billy Q just output is just gonna be too much. And when it gets to the scorecards, I think they're going to give it to him by decision. So I'm taking Billy Q. And I think the output is the cause. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I, yeah, I totally do. Yeah. that. And let me tell you a story. So it started in the week where I saw Billy Q minus 138. I'm like, TV, we got to mm-hmm. look at that. I think that's a really good line. And, uh, I, you know, I think we got a little TV bet it. I did not. I forget for whatever reason. Then the line escaped. And I got very upset with TB. Because I, and I blamed him, which is obviously, <laughs> his, is obviously his fault. Uh, and I forget the specific reasons to that. But believe me, it is his fault. And, uh, yeah, and then the line came back towards this week. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. But, I mean, even maybe specifically today the line came back. So I'm like, you know what? Let me dig into this a little bit more. And I ended up feeling like TB has low T, which is generally how I feel about most things. Um, but I, absolutely, I think Billy Q, it's, it's like you said, they're not going to award a dude that doesn't throw damage. And even if you're going to outpace Billy in round one, he's going to come forward like a motherfucker round two and three. And I don't care that you're triangle choking a guy after four minutes that's making his – MMA debut like they're literally giving him scrubs it was your third fight of the night dude like that's a joke he took a boxing fight then a kickboxing fight and then choked a dude out in in three minutes and it gets and it goes on his pro record come on man and then he had a couple other bs fights since the ufc the problem is is he shouldn't have been let go from the ufc but that's its own other conversation dude is a a decent fighter but he needs to come forward with some damage and i don't i just don't see that from his style so you yeah. gotta take billy here and now that the line has come all the way back I, I don't know what it was that somebody put on zalal maybe it was just general movement or they just watched the damon jackson fight and see it saw him get hold, held down but again like i don't even know if yusuf zalal holds him down let's say three minutes around but he does nothing with it he doesn't land strikes and he's not going for sub attempts is it scoring? I, I, I don't know anymore. You watch well, Dolgarian hold him down for four and a half minutes and it doesn't fucking score? Are you out of your mind? He's not. He wasn't, wasn't laying prey on the floor or holding him against the cage and they're exhausted. It's high level scrambles and it doesn't score. All right. Well, let me give you another little story here, but this is about. Uh, Yusuf Salal's early run in the UFC and and how it finishes off. And listen, I mean, 
you can have some some disappointing matchups over like Ilya Topuri, even that guy making his debut. That that was crazy, and he has some moments in the grappling, but ultimately gets controlled. And Sean Woodson, I mean, that fight was close, and to manage the range and distance of Woodson and still get as much control success, that was impressive. And generally, Woodson gets guys in like sketchy submission attempts and situations, and Zalal's able to kind of navigate all that. However, just can't land enough from distance against a guy that's just that much bigger and, you know, is a pretty, pretty solid striker in his own right. But, I mean, you look at his wins and it's like, well, all his wins are against guys that never really belonged and his losses are against guys that were pretty established. So the question here for Billy Q is, you know, was the, the fight against Gavin Tucker a fluke? Or is that kind of just who you are against someone that's faster than you and also has, like, defensive wrestling? I don't know that Zalal is going to get taken down easily in this spot. That, that's my one thing. Like, I don't think you could just go back takes and like ground and pound TKO or like survive round one against, you know, Spike Carlisle and then, you know, have the guy be the guy with the only cardio in that matchup. Like, I think if you're on Billy Q, just let round one happen and, and bet after that. Like, you're going to get plus money. This guy's losing round one at a 90% rate. It's, it's yeah. not even close. And the thing is, he's relying on guys to slow down. I don't know that, like, Zalal's shown us three-round cardio in every fucking fight that he's ever been in. He's been to decision in the UFC. So there's something also to say for that. Like, I don't think Billy's just going to overwhelm this guy. I think a lot of the reason why Zalal is No, but that's what he does do, though. That The problem is, it's not that he's just going to overwhelm him and Zalal won't be able to hang. The problem is, Zalal is hanging in his fights and he's not doing anything. And you can't do that versus Billy. If right, they're both, if if they're both there, you know who's going to be doing more, and that's a problem. Yusuf, ha, you if you're betting Yusuf, you need him to be a blanket and be absolutely smothering him because anytime it's an at distance and not in round one, Billy Q is going to be absolutely scoring, yeah, unless he's I, unconscious. Well, sure, I get it. My my other, you know, contrasting point is like Demond Blackshear is a bigger and better athlete and a really good scrambler. And Zalal is having early Dude, success gassed, in the round. Yeah, he, he gassed the fuck out. Yeah, no, I'm talking about rounds one and two, though. In rounds one and two, like those are very close rounds that Blackshear ends up winning because he ends up with the control to close out the round. But like right. Zalal has control for about a minute and a half to two minutes in each of those rounds before the bigger, more athletic guy that's a great scrambler gets out. Like, I've seen Billy, maybe maybe he won't be able to scramble in the same way as like an Ilya Topuria or a Damon Blackshear. Like, I don't know if he's that level of athlete. And I think Zalal, Zalal's not bad. Like, I know he's not the most overwhelming, like, in any output sense, but he likes playing off the back foot and countering. So if Billy's just running at him all fight, doesn't that provide him more opportunities to use volume? He comes out on the front, verse, front foot versus Blackshear, but the wrestling is what actually – gives him the most trouble in the first two rounds. In round three, yeah, he damn near gets the finish, and Blackshear barely holds on. I know that that's not going to be the case for you, Billy, but if Salah's not on the front foot to start, and he's not getting taken down, and he wins round one, then what? So I think at that point, you jump in on Billy. Like that, I, I'm not saying don't pick him. You, like, yeah, he probably think, wins round if two you rounds think, If you think Zalal could just do that, though, he would. He should have and would have been able to do it to Sungwoo Choi. That's a terrible match. That dude has no process. He has no defense. And he doesn't have any grappling at all. That should have been a win for Zalal. And he sucked in that fight. Yeah, Zalal's Just only 27. Though. He's still it only 27. Okay, so then this is still another lesson. Otherwise, Billy Q. Listen, this, I love Billy Q. And that could be the problem. Billy Q did just buy a gym in Tampa. from some, yeah. like He owns a gym. He's got other things going on. So... Uh, I mean, would it, that's the problem. Would it completely shock me if Billy lost? Uh, no, I guess not. But I think, I think it's a guarantee that this fight goes a distance. I th yes, I think and that's, that's why it's in a par, it's in a parlay of mine. I parlayed the over two and a half to another over two and a half. Yeah, later I think that's pretty clear. I don't think either guy's death gassing. And that's kind of how I see either guy getting a finish here. Like, I don't think Zalal's landing a one. Like, what, the first guy he finishes in, in his UFC career is going to be Billy Q? And the first guy he's going to get finished by is going to be like, I mean, Billy doesn't have really like fight changing powers, fight changing pace. But I don't think that's going to be what puts Zalal under here. So that's kind of, a, I don't have a confident pick on this fight at the moment. I kind of lean towards a dogger pass, but you know what? I have to make a pick here. 
So ultimately, I mean, my, my prediction is that Billy Q takes over in round two and three. But I mean, how many times can you play the same, you know, reverse card before it, it just doesn't work for you? Oh, it's going to work here. And you're going to be able to still say dog or pass and circle Billy Q when you get your Billy Q live ticket plus money. Yes, I will. Round one, I'm going to be refreshing that odds book. The second we see some plus money and Billy's still alive. Oh, baby, it's happening. So remember, guys, there's plenty more of you in the chat than have done so thus far. So there's plenty of time to right your wrongs. Throw a like on the video. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Take the time to go ahead and follow 138MMA on Twitter. Or, you know, the artist formerly known as Twitter, AX. And then we got that instant game. You know, check us out there. A little bit of YouTube action all around. And let's get out to the prelims because, whew, all right. All right, I'm warmed up here. All right. Are you the nature boy? <clears throat> Fernando El Valiente Padilla versus Luis Corazón de Leon Pajuelo. Boo. Ay, arriba. We have oh, a Lord. fucking firefight on our hands here. The real question is, is Padilla yes, going to stay in the pocket in exchange or is he going to attempt to be back foot left hook Larry? That's my real question here because Pajuelo, I have no question about what this guy's going to do. We're Pajuelo. talking about Lionheart Mexican style, baby. Let's go. We got Corazon de Leon at plus 140. You got to take a shot against the guy that couldn't deal with the cap kicks of Kyle Nelson. And make sure you check out our interview of Kyle Nelson coming with up Kyle. fighting next week at Atlantic City. But ultimately the point is like Padilla, man, just not impressed. Not impressed, okay? Like someone that doesn't need cap kicks well. Someone that is like he's lost plenty and plenty of decisions, you know, even though he's not being finished, like he is losing. He is losing out there. He's not he's not unbeatable. And and in the times where you've you've seen him lose, it's it's the other guy being willing to mix it up and not just eating a punch and, and giving in. Pajuelo, man, like this guy's gonna be ready to to get after it. And he lo- he man, I think this is a lion heart on there, man. Dude, Spike is good. Bro, yeah, Spike is good. Spike, I, I want Spike back in Spike the can UFC. wrestle, bro. We, we, we can wrestle. Him, can you want Fernando wrestling? Back in the UFC. Is Fernando wrestling? No. No. Okay. Thank you. So it's it's Luis, baby. I think he's the cleaner striker that's got better athleticism and he's gonna land harder. And even if Padilla can can sustain it, that's why we just take the dog shot. We don't need to get cute. We don't need to play the KO. This is a guy that's never been finished. He's got the Mexican chin and hard. Like, why mess around, man? Why mess around? Just take the dog shot here. Because I think Padilla, man, there's something just about the loopiness to his strikes. It's just enough to catch a guy like Erosa once. And, like, he has the power when he lands. It's just how many times are you going to land over the course of the fight here? I don't think it's going to be enough to counter the type of volume that Pajuelo is going to be coming back with. Um, I think that's ultimately what brings me here. And you got to take the dog shot. You got it. When you get these contender series guys that are priced as underdogs and you think they're going to have the volume advantage – well, that was the Danny Silva method last week, and, and it yeah. looked pretty good. Yeah, man, we bring the real Spanish on the show, Daz. I got you covered. Luis does look absolutely horrible in the picture. He looks to be in solid shape from what I saw in the instas, but we'll see what happens on way. And Yeah, this is a tats fight. It's, it's like body tats versus outside of the arm tats, like inside versus outside. If you put yeah. them together, you got a full coverage. I definitely think Padilla is like kind of awkward. And I don't know. I would just really, when you watch the the Kyle Nelson performance, um, you know, you just see somebody out there who's kind of shelled up, and he's fairly slow. And it's the the one strikes, the one two strikes at a time are super problematic. Uh, his legs are very skinny. This dude, Luis Pajuelo, I mean, he comes forward like I mean, he's a savage. He's a brawler. He wants to trade in the pocket. He's throwing in combination. He's throwing knees. Um, he's just very, very high pace and he, he hits at a high level. I mean, and he'll KO you anytime three round one KOs, a KO in round two and two KOs in round three. Uh, the pace doesn't stop. So unless you're wrestling him, uh, I don't really think you're going to keep him down. So I really do expect Luis to, to make this kid quit at some point. If not, he'll still, he'll still win a decision in my mind. So I like the dog shot here. What do you think, Tyler? I assume I'm the other Tyler here, so we're going to go with it. Um, I'm going to go with Pajuelo as well. And the reason why, not because not because I think Padilla is bad. Uh, Tyler d- definitely mentioned that he doesn't think very highly of Padilla. I give him a little more credit than that. He is dangerous at range. He's got 
he's got a freakishly long wingspan for the division, and he is a bit of a sniper. And when he cracks you, you're going to feel it. But I do think that this that against a guy like Luis, he's going to have trouble keeping him out of the pocket. And when he gets into the pocket, I think he's going to be able to crash forward, land his shots inside. And the problem with being so long and lanky like Padilla is, when somebody gets inside of that reach, let's see if I can even do this here. So, like, your, your punches now come, like, at, like, a weird angle like this rather than an in tight shot from like a short stubby guy like uh Pajuelo. He's not that short, but I mean, you know what I mean? He's going to be the shorter guy landing those inside hooks and uppercuts. Whereas Padilla is going to have a hard time getting an angle on those punches. And I think he's going to really struggle when he's, when he's forced to, to fight in a, in a phone booth with Pajuelo. So I'm taking Luis Pajuelo. Not, I haven't placed a bet. So not something I've, I've, I've really like jumped on yet, but I've considered it. I just haven't, I haven't got, I'm really exposed on a few other fights and I've got a lot of money invested on this card. So I've, I haven't, I haven't just started sprinkling everywhere else, but if I do, it's definitely going to be on the underdog here. And I do see the value in him. Nice. Nice. I like it. I love when we line up here. Yes. Makes it a fun time, but I do like the discourse when we don't line up too. I prefer so, the discourse. Well, but you're going to have discourse I want, here. I want chaos. I want violence. I want the double birds. I want it all. <laughs> I, want, I want all the smoke. I want it all. Or nothing. Not, not, not that. No. Okay. Yeah, all right. So that. we got that. I, that I don't want. Uh, all right. Fair enough. Well, we got Kurt Deathproof Hollabaugh. And if you know where that nickname came from, shout out to you, Kurt Russell fans. And then we got Trey the Samurai Ghost Ogden. Ooh, man. This is going to be. Uh, I think an interesting Epic battle. Fight of, if the nickname battle is even half as good as the fight, we're in for a doozy. Well, did you know that's a TV nickname? Yes. Wow, so you actually liked it. No. <laughs> ah, you you liked it. You just don't no, want to I don't it. like it. I wanted you to think I liked it. No, 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 no. It's a great that proof movie, isn't sure. that it really isn't that bad. It's just when you well, ask me point blank, I can't. It's Kurt Russell. So that's why I third Kurt Hollenball, you know what I mean? Like he can oh, like he can't really be Kurt Russell. I like that. Anyways, we got plus one thirty on Death Proof. We got minus one fifty five on Jin Sakai, the, the the ghost of Tsushima. Um, yeah, there's the double birds that I needed. Yeah, he did like it, Daz. I'm just saying I he, he I says did. no, but I know you liked it. Um I don't like the dog here. I'm I'm going with the favorite, uh the samurai ghost, Jin Sakai. He's bringing back the, the the ghost of Tsushima vibes for me here. I don't know where the nickname come from, Trey. Can you explain it to me? Here's my thought here. Hall of Bob, he can be taken down. He's willing to play from bottom and, and hunt for submissions. I don't think submitting Trey is going to be that easy. I think Kurt did use a good Why? job. You don't think submitting Trey Ogden – you think submitting yes. Trey Ogden is easy. How many yes. he has? Three submission losses. Oh, bowls. Well, that would be Kurt's path to victory, wouldn't and it? Two of the, and two of them to Thomas Gifford. Oh, bowls. Both of them well, were guillotines, too. Guillotines. Which He's is the worst submitted. submission to get caught in. You He's should not get be getting submitted. caught in guillotines. All right. How long ago was this? Mm, uh, too long ago. But he yeah. also got rear naked choked in 2019. By who? I don't Nick Brown. Yeah, mm. LFA. Nick Brown's pretty good. He's all right. Yeah. Not in the UFC yet. Yeah. Listen, I, I think Trey has the clearly better striking in this matchup. That's I think Kurt fair. is – he's got – I think Kurt's got more power. Um, I think Trey's got better movement, and I think he's got better defense here. Um, huh. I think – yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's going to be able – listen, like against Nicholas Moda, it showed like someone that's willing to come forward on him and get touched by a jab. Like – Kurt throws swinging hooks. Like he wants to get into a war, have you get the fight to the ground and, and finish it with a submission. And I don't know, Jordan, like I don't have any real confidence in this fight and I'm not placing a bet on it, but my pick would be Trey Ogden. I think that since he kind of started running the gym himself, um, since like the split with Kraus and everything, I think we've also seen a big change in body composition as of late. And that is another factor in my mind. Like, listen, it's impressive. Great. It's impressive to see him hanging in fights against a guy like Baja Mendez. I mean, that one was a little weird. But he, listen, Zell Huber, he beats him. Uh, Nicholas Moda, he beats him. And he does it off the virtue of jab, movement, and eventual top control. And seeing Kurt Hollibaugh taken down multiple times by Thud Hubbard, 
I know he fights back to his feet, but I think Ogden is a uh, is a lot better than than Hubbard, and he's he's uh, I know he doesn't have quite the same size, but I think he's just a better fighter. And and since everything, I, I really like kind of the uh, the better side he's bringing to it. But um, I, don't I don't know. know. We'll see here. I'm not I'm too sure. confident, man. I'm not sure because when I was when I've been really thinking about it, and even after I hear your breakdown here. I just feel like Trey Ogden's super frustrating to deal with at distance. And if it's purely a 15-minute striking affair, which is kind of what you've seen a lot from Trey Ogden lately, there's a good chance that he does win that. I just feel like Kurt Death Proof, which is honestly a very funny-ass nickname for him, is it's like I actually think like he's just gonna he's not gonna respect that. He's not just gonna that's not his game. He wants to come forward, he wants to get into those exchanges. And if Trey Ogden is, has shown a propensity to make a mistake and get submitted, I, I don't know. There's part of me that absolutely needs to take a dart throw on Kurt Hollabaugh by submission. And it's something I'm going to have to do. But His hands are tied. I, ha- I have to. It, it's a system play. I have to do it. But I, for, is, for who I pick, I want to see some face-offs and stuff like that too. But that's – absolutely where i end up on hollow by submission otherwise it's ogden by decision but i like hollow bow submission for sure need it in my life so guys i'm gonna be completely completely different on this i hear a lot of not not confident i hear a lot of trey ogden kurt hollow is gonna beat the absolute breaks off of trey ogden i don't think it's gonna be close i think he finishes right. trey ogden i don't think it's gonna be a problem for him That's i think he's gonna walk week. him down land heavy shots Put some damage on Ogden. Ogden's not going to know what to do with him. He's going to just get a takedown, and he's probably going to get submitted. If he doesn't get submitted, Holobaugh's going to work back to his feet and start throwing heavy shots at him, and Ogden's going to be in some serious trouble. Holobaugh's getting the finish here. Dead on serious. He's getting it. I, I To your point, I just when you watch Holobaugh fight, he's like – I mean, he's a – I don't want to sound like super cliche. I mean, he's a legitimate fighter. When you, watch Trey, when you watch Trey Ogden fight, it's – it's so much of this, uh, you know, switch stancing and, and pitter patter movement and the jujitsu. I, I just think to your point, if he doesn't give him that, I, I actually think I said it. If he doesn't give Ogden that respect in the distance, which I don't think he will, he will not. Like, I, which has been Ogden's last fight: Bahamondes and Moda and Zell Huber and Levitt. Levitt with the, the grappling too, but the same thing on the feet. It it was too much respect at distance. Did you see the lack of respect Kurt Hollibaugh gave to Jason Knight when they fought on the Ultimate Fighter? Yeah. My goodness. And that's Jason Knight I, is not somebody you want to just like crash the pocket with. Hollibaugh did not care. And that's why I picked Hollibaugh uh, versus Hubbard as well. Like I knew that Same. he was going to be able to wrestle with Hollibaugh and then disrespect him on the feet. I told everybody clear back before the Ultimate Fighter season started that Hollibaugh was going to win that, that season. And then everybody, not everybody, most people were on Hubbard. In that in that finale, and I told everybody, Hallbaugh's getting it done. He's getting it done inside the distance, and your boy came through for us. That was one of my biggest yeah. bets I've made. I guess that was last year at this point. Yeah, last yeah. year. That was one of the biggest bets I made last year. We Sick may have found Kurt Hallbaugh's biggest fan in one three eight. Dude, I, I'm he, okay. So he technically isn't in my top five favorites, but he's on the cusp. I, I love it. This dude has won me so much money, and like. Kurt Hollibaugh's the man, and the, the way he fights is exciting as heck, and he's not going to go out there, and you're not going to get a boring fight out of him. He's going to go out there and try and take somebody's head off, and if he gets taken down in the process, he's going to sub him. So, yeah, Kurt yeah, Hollibaugh's the man. Love it. Fair enough. I appreciate his style. Like, he's a he's a banger, man. Uh, so, we'll see. Hey, listen, I got to get – I'll be rooting for your bet. Like, uh, I don't think I'll have money on this fight, uh, being that I'm on the favorite that I have no confidence in. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Boo. Ooh, this man. All right, we got Pretty Ricky, Ricardo Hamos versus Juicy J, Julian I don't, I don't, uh, Pretty Ricky's kind of – I feel like he could have done better. All right, no, fair enough. So. Maybe. I don't know. Did, I think did, last did, time did I did freeze? something – I felt like you froze. <laughs> no, yeah, I was thinking because last time I think I did Ricardo like rota- rotation. like ro- I don't know. Something about his elbows, his spinning elbows. That's hard. I think – if he was going to land a knockout here on Juicy J, I don't think he has the striking like with his hands or whatever to do it. But I think if he did it with a spinning elbow, that could do the trick. I think Juicy J is going to put on the ridiculous pressure and that there will be the opportunity to land the spinning elbow. But if that doesn't work, 
It's Juicy J time, baby. So <laughs> it, the fact that this isn't an even money fight, because if Juicy J gets chinned, I could totally see it. you got to take Ricky, like round one KO, just for the culture. If you're beating Julian Arosa, it's probably by round one knockout. But if not, you're probably losing the fight. And Ricardo, Ricardo Hamosh, I've seen you want to get out of there, like, on multiple occasions. And the last time you were out there, oh, baby, not so ideal. And and then he misses weight badly in the matchup before that. Pretty Ricky, what's going on, baby? What's happening? Can you talk to us? Guru, what do you got going on? Because we got you, CJ. I just I really like Juicy J here just generally with the volume. I think he's the the better overall MMA fighter as long as he doesn't get chin the fuck out. And you know, when you look at his losses, right? I mean that the bear, but I mean I understand if you wanted to keep it going, I think he would just would have died again, but that's I, I actually kind of like that he didn't take that damage and now he's taking a little bit of time off. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Alex Caceres is a shifty shifty striker. That there's no shame in that. Um, the Hakeem Dawadu fight, you know, I don't know that he necessarily won, right? That was a close one, right? Um, that's a tough one, but uh, no, nah, I mean, he, he won it pretty fair, I think, with damage, but uh, yeah, I just don't really love Hakaro Ramos's, Ramos's game. Uh, I just think he's kind of a quitter. Um, yeah, I, I just think he's kind of fragile, and uh, I, I don't really trust him at all here. And uh, yeah, I ended up taking the the dog shot on Juicy J. Obviously, that that could go down in flames. I guess suppose at any point, but I honestly feel like even uh, Ramos's power is is overstated. Spin, you know, he knocks out Danny Chavez. Danny Chavez is not UFC level, and then he, you know, he beats Gargori by finish. And then his claim to fame is the spinning elbow knockout on Eamon Zahabi, who we just had on the show the other day as well. Check out that interview. Um, but, you know, Eamon was even saying he just kind of was like overconfident and cocky in that spot and made a mistake. So, like, to me, that doesn't, I don't know. I guess it wouldn't surprise me, of course, to see Ricardo get the knockout, but I don't love it. I'm on Juicy J. So, guys, you thought I was a big fan of Kurt Hollibach. My favorite fighter in the UFC is Juicy J, Julian Arosa. Oh. Even- like, he's juicy, my favorite juicy. fighter. If I could interview this man, it would make my life. I, I'm biggest Juicy J fan in the world. So, so that much happens. so that I actually won't let myself bet him anymore because I know that I'm doing it because he's my favorite fighter. And I and I could see he could be going up against anybody. He could be going against, like, Teporia. And I'd be like, yeah, Juicy J's got a shot here, right? Let's bet him as an underdog. I, I I can't I can't get past that. So I'm 100% on Juicy J. I just can't bet him because I know how biased I am. Maybe maybe if I realize everybody else is saying, oh yeah, Juicy J's really got a shot this time. You're not crazy, dude. You can actually bet him. I might pull the trigger. But Eros is the man. I love the way that this dude fights. He just tucks that chin, gets those hands up, and just starts flinging bombs as he's walking dudes down. Backs them up against the cage. Once he gets them backed up against the cage, he tees off. And then when, when he's got him against the cage teeing off, they're going to shoot a takedown on him, and he's going to Darce choke him, or he's going to Anaconda choke him. However, sometimes, if he's worried about them coming back with a counter shot, the dude shoots a takedown of his own, gets on top, and just starts mugging people. So, Juicy J's the man. His fighting style is the greatest fighting style there is. He's so much fun. He's never been in a boring fight ever. Patty Pimblet, he robbed, he got robbed by Patty Pimblet clear back in freaking Cage Warriors. He won that fight. He was the champ. I don't care what anybody says. Juicy J is the man. He's getting this fight done, and he's gonna he's going to win by first round submission when he gets Hamo stuck up against the cage, panicking, shooting a scared like just a scared man takedown, and he gets choked out. So Juicy J is getting it done first round submission. You heard it here first. Whoa, love that. That's ballsy. The sub, the sub. First round. Wow. Sheesh. <laughs> Dang. Not called. Yeah. The other, the other question Listen, is, you, is your you gotta watch out. Listen, here. you gotta watch out when one three eight calls a shot. That's how he's ahead on the leaderboard there. That's right. Yes. Yeah, I got my. You're not going on Brady's show, are you? You what? You're not going on Brady's show this weekend with that play, are you? I don't uh, uh but if it was that one, that wouldn't be my best bet, but that would definitely be a bet. He hasn't invited me yet, so I don't know if I'm this weekend or next. I think I'm next weekend, but I might I don't know. He hasn't said anything yet. But uh either I think way. I'm on 300. Or on three hundred, that'd be wild. 
Oh. Honestly, I've got better bets on this card than I do any other. So like, or at least I think I do. Maybe I'm maybe I'm crazy. I thought I had good bets last week, and then, you know, uh, Lusa took the easy way out. So that screwed me up. But whatever. Mm. What What's your favorite Juicy J song or lyric? Do you have a favorite line from the one and only Juicy J? But like the musician guy. Yes, sir. Dude, He's I couldn't tell. Copy. I have no clue. Uh, <laughs> Bands <Yeah>. make <laughs> Bands make her dance. What, what's the line he says in that song? Uh, uh, juice. Some say say no to something. Juicy J Kate, like something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. Yeah, rap, so good. Yeah, ratchet. I just told you before we started. Oh my god! I tell you before we started. My my name cut my my channel name comes from like a. 1970s and 80s punk band and you're like yeah what juicy j song you like listen if he's that your favorite TV. fighter you never know if it's juicy j you know no that's fair that's fair he gets some of his lyrical styling this rapper no. <laughs> yeah, it has nothing to do with the rapper wait wait it's not the same person it's not the same it's not the same guy tv assumed and made an ass out of himself it's not the same that's hilarious I'm just making a joke out here. If anyone's got, you know, a favorite Juicy J lyric out there, let me know. Maybe I was asking Guru. You know, maybe you guys. Listen, I got a too, too many. That's a dude. That dude's got bars for days. <laughs> All right, we're on it. We got Miles Chapo Johns versus Cody the Renegade Gibson. We're talking minus one forty two Chapo, plus one twenty on the Renegade. I'm feeling like this is another fight that I absolutely hate, but. Yeah. The reality of the situation is if Miles Johns is allowed to take performance enhancing drugs, listen, if you got picograms in your system, bro, it's because your masking agent didn't work properly. So let's be serious about what's happening out here. Most guys are taking something or altering their hormones in some way with, it might not be steroids. It could be testosterone replacement. It could be, you know, like doing stuff, but a lot of these guys out there are doing stuff. And there's a reason why, you know, Oh, we were just talking about it. Glory MMA. Just turned into marathon MMA. Who runs that gym? Trey Ogden, who had a crazy change in physique. Trey Ogden, whose fighter that he trains get popped for having picograms and gets a fight turned to a no contest. Oh, Miles Chapo John's training with Trey Ogden. It was literally so the week just, before they changed the limits, though. Bro, but yeah, they change the limits because they don't care listen, if you do drugs anymore. You're smart, right? You know how small a picogram is, right? Yeah, but why would it be in your system at all? Yeah, doing well, it, bro. Because they're taking no, supplements. It's bullshit. It's bullshit, bro. I'm, t- I, I'm, t- I'm just telling you right now. Miles Johns, with the change from USADA to whatever the fuck's going on, he comes off the suspension. They do not care what is going on anymore. Okay, so Miles Johns' his cardio is probably going to be fine, like it was his last fight, where I he really shows don't cardio. Believe this. I really don't believe that insurance. narrative. Just said, look I mean, at the shape he's in last fight. Look at the shape he's coming in camp this time again with Trey Ogden. I don't think cardio is going to be an issue. And Cody Gibson, if you're letting Brad Katona style on you like that and hurt you like that, like yeah. Ch- Chapo Johns, he doesn't throw a ton of volume, but he has more power than Brad Katona. So I think you're going to get more chicken dance. And then at that point, it's not that Chapo is going to finish you. It's that he's going to wrestle you and he's going to stay on top. He's probably just going to win one way or another. He's I understand the line movement here. Johns has Who? never lost a decision. Yeah, so, so yeah, I just don't see him being like if Cody comes in with stupid volume, he's gonna have to live to tell the tale that Chapo actually has solid counters. Like he falls in love with his boxing sometimes and he gets low volume because he's not the best, like on the front foot striker. But if you're gonna bring the party to him, like Chapo can like start swinging and he was, you know, he has a solid wrestling background, he's got solid grappling issues. You can't trust his gas tank, you can't trust his heart, but, yeah, but so does Cody. Cody has a good yeah! wrestling background, too. But, like, still, I, that's why I don't expect the wrestling kind of noise. Was that? Was that, what was that? Yeah. Yeah, what is that? It's like, that's like, are you dying? What is that? Yeah, I am dying that I have to break down this fight, but I got Miles <laughs> Chapo Johns at minus 142 in this economy. I'm taking the chronic gas tank issues of Miles Chapo Johns. Um, yeah, but I, I think I, he can. I think he's going to land the more damage in the striking department. And I think the look for Cody Gibson, like the only reason he got brought on was because he had that fun of a fight against Bracketona. And we see what happens when it's not like, like these tough guys, they were brought on for a reason to like, Oh, we got to bring back some of the old heads. And like, yeah, they had more experience than the young guys, but yeah, but they didn't even reason bring they back... left the UFC. Okay. In the okay. Okay. They didn't even bring on Timur Valiev. So chill. He was clearly one of the best 
is is still one of the best prospects of that whole thing, and he's still not on the on the. On yeah, the until roster. they need a short notice opponent, and Team Rebellion is willing to take it. It's the yeah. tale as old as time. Every person that competes on Cup generally in the last few times has just gotten signed on a short notice. That's not necessarily true at all. You just make shit up. You wouldn't even watch the show. So there's well, so many contestants what, you don't remember. So just Michael know, Gilmore, maybe, do you have an excuse for that? Yes, he literally took a sh- the, sh- the fight. He took tough on short notice, so they gave him more fights for it. You literal, you would know that if you watched the show, but you didn't. So thank you for making my point. Um, to your point about breaking down this fight, <laughs> I, ab- I absolutely hate it, and it's super not fun. I, you know, I kind of think dog or pass, but then it's to then it's just yeah. I mean, he looks in good shape. He looks like he was ready to take a short notice fight because he was only suspended for a couple months because of the small peak of Graham and it was no contest and everybody felt kind of bad for him because the, the journalist misprinted that the dude because somebody else, they announced the suspensions at the same time and they, they wrote it wrong that he was suspended for cocaine when he wasn't. So everybody felt really bad for him because he was not suspended for cocaine. Um, yeah, so he's back and he looks in good shape. And I don't really trust Cody to not give up takedowns, but you know, at the same time, I don't really trust Miles Johns that much at all to do anything. So I parlayed this fight. Oh no! no. Oh no! <laughs> so I took, oh. so I took the over two and a half oh, of this no. fight, and I parlayed it to the Billy fight. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> I hate just I hate it in general. Well, well, I mean, you said the word parlay for this well, fight. So, well, so what I can do if I really, <laughs> you really don't like it, you, I feel like if anybody's getting a finish, it's not going to be Miles. It's going to be Cody. So you take Cody like round one, round two. Otherwise, like that, that parlay should be just fine. Because like you said, otherwise it's Miles John wrestling to a decision. What do you think, one three eight? You've been so quiet. Yeah, I've been processing <laughs> what you guys are saying here, and. TB's got me kind of questioning my pick because I'm so I'm on Gibson, but the whole like you know, maybe Johns is on some stuff. I could see that, and you know, I maybe maybe that is an issue for us. I'm on I'm on Gibson for the simple fact that I think he's gonna have more output, and it's similar to you know, like like I said with Billy Q, he's gonna have more output. Gibson's gonna have the better output. He does have solid wrestling fundamentals. People people don't give enough credit for that. I think he's going to be able to stop at least a few takedowns, and I think he's going to have way more output on the feet. He's going to be taller and rangier. I think he's going to have the uh, the the probably not maybe not the better striking, but the better striking for scoring in an MMA fight. So I've got to side with Gibson, but it's uh, the confidence got even less after TB mentioned the whole like Johns could be juicing type of thing. So yeah, it's it's not like I said, it's not a confident read, but I lean Gibson the height. The reach, the output, that's just where I'm at. Listen, I Listen man, anybody anybody thing, could be juicing. Juice. Don't don't let that sway you. Yeah, he but if Miles Johns about. is juicing and it makes it so he gets more output because he's not worried about gassing, that changes the argument quite a bit. Yeah. Well, well, it's certainly fair. Fight, he looks in ridiculous shape. He's standing next to Trey Ogden, okay. who also looks in ridiculous shape. And it's they true. look in ridiculous shape together. Can Both juice to the gills. You and some vitamins. Hollowball is still going to destroy Ogden, so we don't have to worry I about hope if he's so. juice or not. <laughs> I hope so. We destroy. Shall we shall see. That, that, hey, listen, I wouldn't put it past them. So we got Yarno Motocross Let's Aaron. Do this fight fairly quickly. This is not worth it. <laughs> Yarno Motocross Aaron's versus Steven the Ninja and Win. Oh, Lord. We got plus 145 Aaron's. Versus minus 170 on the ninja side. Um, listen, he said it, not me. That was his choice. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles are, are, are some of my favorites, so I appreciate it. Motocross, that's a TB nickname. If you didn't know, Yarno Aarons used to be a, a motocross writer at, in the Netherlands. And he tra- he used to train MMA. He used to train MMA to, to train for motocross. And he was like, oh, shit, I like this better. So Dutch kickboxer versus – yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, listen, the win I think has the better boxing here. Aaron's is going to be a little bit more aggressive, and I like his kicks. And his grappling isn't the worst, but it's also not the best. They flew this guy out, so his first fight, they're like, all right, well, we have a fight in Paris. We need an international guy that could come over from the Netherlands. So 
they do that for some fan interest. And then they're like, oh, wait, well, we have Sung Woo Choi in, uh, in Singapore. So who do we bring over? Oh, let's get Motocross on the phone. So they fly <laughs> him over to Singapore and, you know, he gets they hurt. Did around. Not, they <laughs> did not go, let's get <laughs> Motocross on the phone. I promise <laughs> you right now, that is not what happened. <laughs> this fight is it. going the distance. So oh, God, you, yes. you can parlay that too. I love it. What do you mean? Not just Evans, run face Jarno forward. Like... Aaron, Jarno Aaron's as tough as nails, as you see when he goes the distance with Sung Woo Choi. And um, Stephen Wynn is just super, I'm just so unimpressively boring. His, his I, I don't know. They say his fight output, his his striking output is so high, but maybe it just doesn't look that way because he's such a counter striker. I just I just feel like he's very vanilla with his game. He's not somebody I'm looking to. I'm looking. Sorry, he's somebody I'm looking to fade moving forward. But this is not the spot. So I like the over, and I like. I suppose I like Stephen Wynn. <laughs> what do you think? One three eight. So like I haven't even thought about the over in this fight i don't know why probably because i saw it was minus two something and just said oh it's juiced over mm. but yeah, that's kind of I, I got pick them oh dude serious no way yeah i got pick them on though because that was the one one of the other fights as well solid when, uh, dude. shout out danny legs that's solid yeah because this one should go over. i mean it should go to decision at a pretty high clip i think steven win is better uh pretty much everywhere except for killer instinct he does lack that severely which lends to the over Stephen Wynn did get a finish on the Contender Series in his last one, but you know, it, it was, I, yeah, wasn't no. a you know, no, it wasn't like impressive. it was, it wasn't like he got the finish because he had a good killer instinct. He got the finish because the ref was like, "Look, man, that's enough." <laughs> so, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take Stephen Wynn by decision. I don't feel great about it. Uh, yeah, you could probably bet him, and it might it might be all right, but I just I haven't pulled the trigger on him. So I think, but I do think he's better pretty much everywhere outside of maybe killer instinct, but you know, motocross ain't bad. He's just not this level. I do like the nickname motocross. That's actually pretty good. No, it's not. Don't no, that's do a that. good almost, one, dude. No, don't I almost do that. did motorsport. That. I almost did that's, so that's, like, that's better. Motor, no, motocross is better. Now here's the deal because you, you get, you get this with your buddies, right? You got, you got that one buddy that's like, that's really into something like say they're really into like um making nicknames that suck. Okay, <laughs> that one's a little too specific. But say they're really into like Mario Party, right? Like we're going back. And then like, oh yeah, that's Mario Party over there because like th that's how you know them because that's what that's what they do all the time. They're always playing Mario Party on the N64. Yeah. So you got that. So like motocross that's what he did that's what he's into i can see his buddies being like ah oh, that's motocross over there yeah. you know so exactly. i get that always one. fucking riding his fucking bike motocross always fucking doing tricks on the fucking dirt yeah but track. he's like dutch so you have to say it in dutch motocross or... motocruz is dutch, a language? <laughs> dutch, is, dutch isn't a language what do they speak it's a, it, well they're from and so they're in amsterdam so what do they speak um they speak many languages uh dutch uh, like it's um, dutch is its own language yeah it's, uh yeah Dutch is a do yeah Deutsch yeah of course Dutch is a language no it's Deutsch Deutsch well, Deutsch German Deutsch. Ger that's like Deutsch is how they say like Deutschland is like Germany so it's different right okay it's it's just Dutch so then Dutch is still a language though Dutch is a language I got, yeah yeah you're yeah. sure about that I think yeah. it, it might be called something else we're gonna have to look it up I'm pretty sure Dutch is a language chat's gotta know yeah I'm not certain is someone is someone's uh, Google look, fingers none of us working? are Dutch. Please. That's no. the only international country I've been to, though. It was a great there time. There you go. All right. We're moving on. We, we got the monster. Man, you don't even know. Monster. Let's go. Let's fight. Monster Montserrat Rendon versus Daria from Russia with love, Zelznikova. This is going to be an absolute killer matchup. The monster facing the James Bond villain girlfriend. Um, <laughs> things could just not go any worse. Um, but Rendon, listen. She does not have a problem maintaining chest-to-chest -chest pressure when it gets to the wrestling exchange. That's the way I'll put it. Uh, it's very easy for her to make that happen. Uh, but Zelziakova, she's very reliant on striking and landing heavy, heavy punches from distance. So my thought here is, like, if Rendon is not getting the top control, like, she's, she's got absolutely disgusting 
technical striking. Like he's just winging punches, like head out there. Like we're swimming, you know what I mean? Like, uh, and, and she's like winging it from all angles, but you know, she's got some minor wrestling upside and it's like, Oh, she's like quote unquote yeah. rounded. But at the end of the day here, like even if Zelznikova is not able to put her away, I think it could just look like discount version of, uh, what was it, uh, Yasmin Haregi and Sam Hughes? Like, she could just batter her up to a decision for three rounds, even if she doesn't get a finish. So Rendon, undefeated, maybe too tough to, to get finished, but I think from Russia with love. It's just you can't parlay it at this price. There's no <laughs> – on a debut, um, coming over from Aries FC versus the butt-scooting specialist herself in uh, – <laughs> who was it? Everyone's favorite Georgian girl. Um I should say Jojua. Liana Jojua. Sorry. Couldn't get there. Guru, what, what are you cooking here? Yeah, this fight is uh not great <laughs> at all. Um, yeah, the, the big problem from Daria is yeah, if you watched her tape, you watch her get uh honestly, she's mulling she's mauling Melissa uh Dixon now, Melissa Mullins. She's mauling her, and then she gives up a takedown, uh, a bum rush takedown, and then just from there tries to go for an arm bar gets gets mounted and gets absolutely obliterated with uh on at the buzzer which is uh not ideal at all ref absolutely saves her so i just don't know that she's not a turtle off her back and the propensity for rendon to grapple makes this just fight just like a full pass for me right i mean otherwise it's it's really just dog or pass otherwise you you have to take Zenyakova by uh, Zel Zenyakova by by knockout, right? Or I'm looking here, you can get her under two and a half at plus two seventy five. Mm. I mean, that's that's the only you got to figure she's got to get a finish because if the fight extends out and there's any grappling involved, you you can't feel good about your minus two eighteen ticket. It's just ah. worrisome. I got to say, sometimes it's favored or pass, and I think that's the that's the scenario I'm in. Uh, I understand that. Tyler, what, what are you cooking here? So, Rendon isn't that good. Uh, no. Zelezin Yakova is going to beat the brakes off her. It's not going to be close. Yeah. This, I'm more confident in this than I'm in Kurt Hollibaugh, and I'm very confident in Hollibaugh. Zelezin Yakova is far better than Rendon. Rendon's only path to a takedown in most of her fights, in any fight that I've seen so far, has been she has to catch a kick. Now, can she do that? Sure. That's what she did to get Tamiris Vidal down. Tamiris Vidal is terrible. Tamiris Vidal only stop. got to the UFC. Stop. She only got to the UFC because she has a DQ win over Eileen Perez, where she was getting absolutely ran through. And then because Eileen Perez could not get the finish because the referee just wanted to see a dead body, they she eventually ended up you know getting disqualified for breaking every rule in the book. That's the only reason Vidal made it to the UFC. Then yeah. Vidal loses a split decision to Rendon. Split decision. If you can't just run over to Miras Vidal, which people are picking Vidal. I don't understand that. But yeah, if you bad. if you can't run over to Miras Vidal, you're you're just not cut out for the UFC. Rendon's yeah. had six wins, three of which have gone to split decision. The other three are unanimous, but they're not over good level of competition. So Lesin mm-hmm. Yakova is a good striker. She's going yeah. to hurt Rendon, hurt this woman. She's She's going to get Rendon reaching for leg kicks. And sure, maybe she gets one in the first. Maybe she does. And she gets the takedown. But then you're going to see Zelezin Yakova fake that kick and just crack this poor woman. And she's going to get her out of there. I think she gets out of there at the latest early second round. Zelezin Yakova is getting this one done. I'm very, very confident in this woman. Zelezin Yakova and under one and a half is plus 450 on Bet365. Not a bad play. I did. So I've got a little over three units on her. Uh, giving her this one away for free on Zelenzin Yakova's money line at like, uh, like minus one seventy something. I think uh, minus one seventy maybe. Uh, and then I also have another half unit on her inside the distance at plus two something or another, two forty maybe something like that. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. I wow. should. Hey, Maybe listen, hella, hella line you're getting that much plus money on someone. Like, what's the line on now for that finish? We don't probably even have it on. Uh, you don't know what she's at inside yeah. the distance now. Yeah. I mean, we don't have it on draft. Games, uh, I don't see it on our books. So. She, she was not going to submit her. 
Yeah, minus one, 170, I think it was, for the money line, and then plus mm. 230 something, plus 240, something like that. So very nice. All right, we got Igor da Silva Severino, also known as Luis Severino. Shout out to the to the Jankies. They suck. Ooh. But then we got Andre Mascote Lima. Um, yeah, I think basically like Severino wants to come forward and the I mean, like he has he's bleeding in his tabology picture. <laughs> Like, does that not tell you about what this guy wants That's, to do? I would not be surprised if he starts the fight versus Andre Lima bleeding. <laughs> he's just going to come out bleeding. <laughs> That's just a perpetual state for him. He's, he's, uh, <laughs> he's constantly dramping. Uh, that's not ideal if that were the case. They probably won't let him in. But uh, I'm thinking he'll get that cleared up in time for the fight, thankfully. <laughs> um, but uh, Luis over here, Mr. De Silva, Severino, should we say, He's going to come into this fight, and, I mean, he's going to bring it to Lima. It's just, I mean, he has no semblance of defense at all. And he's None. been fighting these guys that are, like, legitimately midgets compared to him. And, yeah, you can just run those guys over. And contender series, it was, like, almost closer to a fair fight, but still not quite. Um, and you could just, I mean, he just runs through him for the, the vast majority of all the action. Severino here, I think he's going to run into the te more technical fighter. Minus 185, probably a bit too wide to just be playing straight on the money line. But I think given the style of Severino, I know we haven't seen him finish. But, man, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if his forward pressure it plays to his detriment. I just can't confidently give out a, a bet on this fight. I think, you know, seeing both guys come off contenders and immediately matched up against each other. And then this is somewhere where I, I think we still have a bit to learn. And That's true. But we still, gotta stake, from we still got to stake our claim. We still got to have some level, some yes. level of T, TB. So give me your bet. Come on, well, put your money down. Bet the I mean, Andre, Andre Lima and over one and a half. That's the same game parlay you can't track on Bet MMA, but you can make some fucking money. So let's do it. Let's make some fucking money, bitch. I actually love that. That's genius. Yeah. Over one and a half and Andre yeah. Lima. That's you know it's going to be nice. I love it. I actually love it because it's going to be absolute AIDS. And uh, Andre Lima is I, – what I really took away from Andre Lima that I, that I enjoyed about watching him is he, he has a high level of process. There's a game plan there. He can do uh, almost you know, all the things at a, a fairly high level. He's decently well-rounded. Uh, Igor Severino, like you said, is, he's just absolute fucking chaos. And he's got no defense and no regard for himself. So I just don't think that's going to go well here in a guy that will be fairly well-prepared for that. Uh, what do you think, uh, 138? <laughs> So, so Lima actually impressed me a little bit more than I thought he would on the contender series. I, so I, I did pick him to win on the contender series, but I wasn't like, oh, yeah, this guy's going to run this man over. But he looks way better than I thought he was going to gonna look. And Severino kind of performed like I thought he was going to perform. So it might be skewing me a bit, but I got to side with Lima. And it, that guy on Dana White contender series did not want to fight at all. He was just running yeah, around the stage. He did not exactly. want to fight. That so guy was just I, trying not, to get away. Yeah, so I'm not sure that that is as much as Andre Lima is amazing, as much as that right. guy's a little puss puss. Or it could have been also that he quickly found out that this Lima guy is far better than him and he didn't get out of there. Both. <laughs> it could have been. Both. But yeah, like it's weird matchmaking on the part of the UFC because both these guys are undefeated coming off of contender series. You'd think you'd want to get both of them a couple of wins, build a prospect, and then later down the road when they lose, they've got name value. But the UFC is saying, nah, we're just going to figure out right quick who was going to push, and the other guy's gone skis, or just going to be, you know, a stepping stone for somebody that we need to get wins to. So that's kind of weird matchmaking, I thought, because they're both undefeated. It's not like they're both coming off contender series and have a handful of losses, but both guys being being like they are, it seems like the UFC is going to just kind of try to figure out who the prospect is in this one. And I think it's going to be Lima. I think he's better. It's probably a decision, but it could it could be a later finish. The over one and a half, like you said, I don't mind that at all. Uh, Lima over one and a half is a good play. He could start him early, but I don't think he will. I think it's going to be a late finish if he does get the finish because Severino is a bit of a dog early on especially. So, yeah, Lima's my pick, but I'm, I'd probably just pass on this one. Nice, nice. Yeah, don't blame me for passing. This is a good learning spot, but I have mm -hmm. to be a degenerate. So, nothing wrong with that. I mean, there could oh, be maybe no, no, be no, careful. <laughs> We've got Mohammed the Motor Usman versus Michael Mick Parkin. 
which one's the nickname? Which one's his real name? You're left to decide. Oh, uh, that was the worst one of the night. That's how that you was pretty bad, it. actually. Yeah, that's horrible. It, it, Don't even do it if you're gonna do. If you went from motocross to this, yeah. If you're gonna be lazy with it, don't do it. Yeah, come on, man. Michael, it's not his nickname. That's his government. Like that's not a nickname. It's exactly. But they made nickname his real name, so I had to. No, his name is okay. Okay, okay. he goes by Mick. It's what he asked to be called. What if? What if we go with Mick? Where you parking? Oh, Man, yeah. Oh, man. See, like, at least do we'll play on like, words where, here, brother. Like where you park your vest, you know what I'm saying? Or where you park in oh. your car. Yeah. Uh, so I'm getting a lesson in my own game over here. Look yeah, because this. you stink. I mean, somebody's got to carry the team. I don't know. Jesus Thank Christ. You. He, my comes, God. he literally comes on the show and gives the best nickname that has ever been given on this show. So now chase that leaderboard. I've had, to, I've had to fix you twice in this one. The Terminator and now where are you parking? Brother. Brother. You've had Literally. some good ones, but don't leave letting me down on this one. This you was a, this was a give And me. you want – thank you, one three. And you wonder why I give him shit for it because he comes he comes half-assed with terrible nicknames. And I got to listen to him. They're terrible. Dude, but motocross was legit, though. I'll give you that. No, I, that one, I still won't give him that one either. <laughs> Well, that's because Guru still looks like he's at the fucking X Games right now. That's why he's still upset about the motocross. Rock right it on, bro. Jesus I'm Christ. shredding the gnar, bro. Oh, yeah, no, you, you're, seeing your coordination, I know you're not doing any of that right now. Yo, I well, can absolutely so. snowboard. No, nah, I know you can. That's the one thing you can do. Uh, anyways, don't <laughs> worry. You can back up his Sean White persona over there. Um, so anyways, in this matchup, the, the motor, not motocross, don't get Mohammed Usman. Confused with Moto Cross from earlier, but definitely um, different. Yeah, definitely different. Definitely different. Um, look, looking at Mo Usman, the things that stand out in this matchup, he's not a southpaw like Machado. I think he's gonna have um, a more difficult time goading Parkin into the exchanges that Usman needs to be successful. So Machado, by going southpaw, takes away some of those front, like those lead calf kicks. And also makes it more difficult for Parkin to land the jab consistently. So I think in this matchup, we go back to kind of what we saw from Parkin in his debut. I think Jamal Pogues, he's not like a great fighter. But at the same time, we have seen him have a functional functional boxing game with a little bit of volume. And we've seen him have some wrestling too. And I think that's kind of like if you strip away Muhammad Usman's name, that's kind of exactly what he is at his core is like Jamal Pogues. So I think it's like calf kicks and jabs and – you know, just not getting taken down by Mo Usman is going to be enough and not getting knocked out, too. Like, the counter left hook, I mean, that thing lands. Like, yeah, it's scary. It really is. Like, he does swing with some power. It's just, you know, unless you're Jake Fat Collier and you're completely gassed out by four minutes and 32 seconds, then, you know, it's going to look different as the fight goes on. So Machado, once again, I think a lot of the reason he has success, like, he has sneaky cardio um, for for – like the stupid shit that he throws and also, you know, the Southpaw stylings. I think he's a little bit more explosive in his, in his combinations. Like Usman's a one strike and done type of guy in that regard. So, you know, the eye poke bought him a lifetime to, to get his, uh, to get his stamina back in the Collier fight. Right. And when you yeah. hear how Jay Collier was like crying after getting eye poke, like that's grounds for an immediate point deduction. If that fight sure starts again, because it clearly changed how the rest of the fight went. Like, there's a reason why Usman went from landing zero strikes to landing, like, 80 in the next two rounds. So, um, I got I got where you park in here. Thank you, 138, <laughs> for coming correct. Um, listen, I've been a little tired that's from so the much, move, that's but so I'm much loving better. the new no, house. No, no, And I'm no. going to bring a better better approach. I got I to gotta, gotta workshop a couple of these nicknames. You, act, you have to actually work on play on words and be clever, which is yeah, not like the freebies. your forte. Oh my God! I heard he's extra motivated. This kid. <laughs> that's see, it. Let's go. Thank you, Pepe. Let's that's fucking go. Play, see, that's oh, a play busy. on words. You see I'll how that works. See, you gotta be. You gotta be witty. Not necessarily. Listen, you're good. just. You're just the biggest hater in the league because even when I do have good nicknames, you just love putting on your hater game. So. You know I'm saying. Go ahead. What do you got here, sir? What do you got going now? This fight's absolute AIDS for sure. I like the over, which so do the bookies. Mm-hmm. Well, give it to me, Freddie. What do you got? The line has the line has still even gotten further since where you've written it. It's at minus one seventy five now. Um, 
yeah, I don't know. I I like Mick Parkin to get it done. I think he's going to be a little bit faster, and uh, I trust his cardio more. But I, I don't. I wouldn't be surprised if Mick, Mick Parkin ended up being fraudulent and and losing to Mo Usman. Where the fuck is wait minus one seventy five for the over two and a half? You're saying? Yes, sir. not the money line, right? Oh, okay, all right, all right. I thought I got that wrong. I was like, what? Okay, you get everything. Well, that, wrong. Yeah, that moved a lot. Jesus Christ. What do you All think? Right. I'll leave if I leave the slideshow to Guru next week. Let's see what happens. Hey, we won't we won't have a slideshow. Sorry. Yeah, there will thank be no you. slideshow. Thank you. Yeah, I don't do anything there, around here. There will be yeah. zero slideshow. Yeah, yes, you're welcome. So okay. So Usman's probably gonna win a really boring, greasy decision where he doesn't really throw any volume whatsoever. And Parkin doesn't throw any volume because he's stuck against the cage for 13 and a half, 14 minutes of a 15 minute fight. And I think Usman's going to win and he's going to throw like 16 strikes or less. That's awesome. That's what I think is going to happen. Oh, fuck. I, yeah. I think that's what we're going to get. I think it's going to be the first like 20 seconds of the fight. Parkin's going to come out quick. Usman's going to go, oh, this guy's like uh, kind of dancing around doing his thing. And he's like, not today, man. I'm just going to push him against the cage and hold him there. And he's I think he's because I think he's a stronger guy. And I think he's going to yeah. be able to hold him there once he gets in there. I think that's what we're going to get. It's going to be super boring. And nobody's going to like it. But Usman's probably going to get it done in an awful decision. Yeah, he's got some tickle biddies out there. When you see because, like his pre UFC pictures versus what he looks like coming into the UFC, I hope he got back on that good juice, Mr. Motor. He definitely could have. Like you said, you saw has gone. Done. So, listen, there's a reason why nobody in the NFL or NBA ever tests positive, and it's not because they're not taking drugs. What's the – you think it's just that they don't test them? <laughs> yeah, and they just fucking – come on. You got to be egregious to get caught, essentially. Like, you have to, like, be pissing steroids, like, straight. Like, you <laughs> have to have been – So, you think that – so, you think, so, you're right. among the people that – so, you think the average NFL, MLB – NBA athlete is taking steroids for sure. Like you think I, you over you think 50% or more. I think that there's some gifted natural athletes out there, but I think that the rigors of a full-time schedule like that and the allure of like money coming along with it and the locker room culture, like when you read into some of the the reports, like the Mitchell report and things like that, it's not just like the big target guys that are going after, and it's not just like they were specifically going after like anabolic steroids and stuff, but as a tale as old as time, like greenies, methamphetamines were a fucking part of the game. Guys popping yeah. fucking Adderall is a part of the yeah, game. Yeah, but now you're but, not talking about what I'm talking but, about. So. But at this, like, it's still like whether it's HGH, whether it's testosterone replacement, whether it's some form of anabolic steroid that they can use a masking agent or take estrogen to balance out their ratio of this. Like when you look at Daniel Cormier's testosterone levels, that no natural human would have ever had those levels. It's just that he had a high enough estrogen count to balance out the testosterone. So they're like, okay, sounds good. But like, it, like when Mark Hunt came up with that fucking lawsuit against the UFC about Brock Lesnar and all that shit, like it's all real, man. Like all these guys, like not all of them, but Nate Diaz says it too. Like all these guys are juicing, bro. It's it's a lot. Of them. It's a lot. Of them. Yeah, it's if, probably juicing. If Usman's back on the juice at the way he was pre UFC. He's definitely win this fight. Fair enough. Bro, people that served at the restaurant I was working at were on the fucking juice. You think fighters aren't on the fucking juice? I think they're not on the same juice that guys that aren't getting tested. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. They just have better doctors. And, bro, you're at a, at a good gym. They got the right doctors, dude. It's all part of the program. You just got to pay them after the camp. Isn't Usman's other brother a pharmacist? Just saying. Okay. Just saying, Kamaru, Mohammed, and uh, the other brother. Yeah, I can't remember All what his those. other brother's name is, but the pharmacist. Yeah. All right. Well, here we go. We did it, guys. Live Ooh. every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We had an absolute banger of a card here for what should be underwhelming in the way it plays out. So. Really appreciate all you guys um, so much every week for tuning in. Throw a like if you haven't already. Subscribe, please, if you haven't already. We're on the countdown to 1K now. We broke the 500 a while ago. We broke the 600. Let's get us to 1K. I don't see why not. So we're already having a great time. Would be better if you guys keep on joining us every week. Just really uh, love having a good time and breaking down these fights. It's all about the LOLs and having a good time. You got to keep in mind, me and Guru actually watch the, watch the fights together that we possibly can. So – 
like you have to keep in mind that we are actually like bro so when we come on here it's not the typical mma breakdown show like you're actually getting like best buds talking about fights like that. no so we're not don't, don't appreciate you don't, my dude i don't i don't co-sign to that at all <laughs> Wait, you live in the same city close I'm, i moved too yeah. i just moved oh okay and he's and moving I'm, too. In the pro- I'm moving as well it's just mad funny we we've recently yeah. it's like the scene in super bad where they're going on this the separate ways on the elevator at the end nice so. There you, you go. Gonna, I thought you guys were gonna laugh. All right. but no laugh. idea. I haven't yeah. seen Super Bad since I was in like middle school. I have no idea. Go watch that movie. It's fucking incredible. It's great. I got it's time great. to watch movies, man. We got fights coming up. No, watch Super. Movies. You have you have to watch Super Bad. That's worth the hour and a half. All right, Tyler. Before we pass it off to Guru for his traditional closeout, what do you got to say to the people? Where can they find you? Yeah, of course, they can find me at 138 MMA pretty much everywhere, except for on Instagram where there's an underscore between the numbers and the letters. Otherwise, at 138 MMA. Here's the deal, guys. I don't know if you know this, but Guru is actually going to be joining me tomorrow for a little MMA trivia over on my channel. That's 138 MMA on YouTube. If you're not going there to support your boy Guru, go there to support whoever he's facing and see him lose. I mean, maybe that's what you want to watch. Either way, or it's going to be a good time. <laughs> We're going to have some fun. We're going to do some MMA trivia, and the chat's going to be wild. We're going to do it live. Originally, it was going to be pre-recorded, but Guru came up with the great idea to do it live. So that's what we're going to do, gosh Lucky darn it, me. tomorrow night. And it's going to be uh, 9.15 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. It's not standard time anymore, guys. you got to change your graphic. EDT at Ooh. 9.15 p.m. EDT. Oh, wow. Look at that. Word. Oh, that's the wow. difference. Standard time and wow, daylight time. Oh my you just, God. That just got to you. Yeah, bro. I know that. I, but I don't. Do, but as you know, I don't do the graphics, so that's, that's on true. TV. Yeah, no, I, I had no fucking idea that was the difference. I just learned something today. Wise wow. beyond my years, fellas. That's wild. Love wow. that. It's a beautiful thing, guys. Listen, make sure you're checking out one three eight over on Twitter. Make sure you're checking him out over on YouTube. Make sure you're following my unbelievable co-host, TV Scouting MMA. On X, Instagram, Picket, Verdict, Tapology, and Bet MMA. You can follow me, the Guru, Guru Scouting MMA, X, Instagram, Picket, Verdict, Tapology, and Bet MMA. We are back next week with UFC Atlantic City. We're bringing on Narco Cop. Going to be a banger of a card. We will be there live in person. Cannot wait. Got a room at the hotel, baby. We're going to be getting wild <laughs> and having a good ass time. Not too Jesus. Long. What type of good time are we having down there, Guru? I might have to back out at the hotel. <laughs> he's gonna now, the, the real gonna question be, is, he's gonna where be, are you parking? He's gonna be roofied at? up. I have no idea what's happening. Ooh, I like here. that. Where are you parking? That's the great question. Where are you parking? Dude, oh, where do, where's our, I meant like the type of time where we walk out the next morning and like, dude, where'd I park my car? Where am I parking hey, my like car? Like Zoltan? Yes, Zoltan. There it was. Hopefully you got it. Dude, where's my car was, was from yes. Zoltan. <laughs> I waited till the, the end. Goes for, that's what I meant. The full joke goes full circle. And then, full circle. And, then, and, then, and then and then the podcast was over. Take care, guys. Be safe out there.